to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 14th. Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason. We welcome you in. Deep breaths, everyone. Deep breaths. Nice exhale from the weekend. Yes, yes. We need to. We need to practice what we preach today, gentlemen. Deep breaths. Let's not (laughs) overreact to week one unless you're Blake Jarwin. Uh, In which case. Too soon. You should overreact. You should just react. But we'll talk about that. Uh, Busy weekend of games, two more tonight. How did it feel to have football back on the old television? Look, Thursday was cool. You got to see, like, Mm -hmm. oh, football's back. But but yesterday, the full slate of games was real life again. (laughs) It it was life-giving. It was fantastic. I enjoyed it immensely. And uh, now I'm, I'm just ready to have the rest of the season happen and watch the Arizona Cardinals go undefeated. I oh. mean, you know, it's probably going to happen now. So far, so good. Yes, I was very excited to drive home with the brain slushy. Mm. Uh, I felt it too. <laughs> the brain slushy. I love that. <laughs> the the way we watch the games here at the footballers' headquarters, we have our nine giant televisions. Got the the red zone going on in the middle, so we missed nothing. And there were a few children involved by the but but by the end of eight hours or whatever it is of football where you have the nine screens just overstimulating your brain and you don't know where to look in this hoof your, your, your brain feels like a slushy when we you didn't get, get that we didn't get any preseason practice mike to prep the brains yeah. for the for the it sounds overload. so dumb to I, be <laughs> like we had too much football to watch but the reality is when you're oh, when you're my sitting in front of all those screens, and they're all taking snaps at different times. You're trying not to miss a snap from any game. And you're, going, and you're doing that for all day. It is exhausting. It's, it's a little bit more exhausting in week one because you don't want to miss a thing. Yeah. You don't want to miss, oh, Gibson, Gibson has the ball. Oh, Jonathan Taylor, does he get a snap? He was, was in the backfield. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was exciting. Uh, it's Monday. It's time for some uh, Monday fun. Oh, yes. Fun. Mm. Here's some one-liners from our listeners. Boss Jacobs. Yes. Josh Jacobs. Oh, <laughs> yes. yes. Austin Meckler. Mm. That's a that's a meh. Is that what that yes, is? Yes, yes, I disagree with this Mike, one. why don't you take this next one? Oh, yes, followed up by Calvin Ridley. Curiously good. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> oh, but, but there was Michael Anonymous. Hip hop anonymous. How Jer- about Jared, Jared Barf? Oh, that's a classic, truly. Gardner Winshoe. Mm, yes, yes, yes. DJ Snore. DJ Poor. <laughs> DJ Less. Hayden Worst. Hayden <laughs> hurts my fantasy team. Oh, this one's bad. DeAndre oh, oh. DeAndre Whiff. Oh, that's, that's just mean. That's the best one. I had not seen that one yet. DeAndre Whiff. DeAndre Whiff. Oh, oh, that was brutal. That was brutal. So well, if you don't know, yeah. if you if you did if you weren't watching the game or you are unaware, the Detroit Lions just dominated the Bears. Game over super early. And then somehow, some way, in the fourth quarter, massive quick comeback, and all of a sudden the Bears are gonna win the game. But the Lions have one last chance. They drive down the field. They Stafford gets them in position. Clock running down. Few seconds left in the game, and Matthew Stafford throws a game-winning, oh. basically walk-off touchdown, easy touchdown catch, wide open DeAndre Swift, and he drops the ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting a petition to count that touchdown in Stafford's fantasy points, <laughs> even though they didn't get to win the game. Oh, that just... It was a perfect pass. It was a game-winning play. For a rookie yeah. in his first game to yeah. literally have been the... like, yeah. And then one, play, like, one more play, and the game's over, and it's just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. it was... It was my you heart lost is the game. broken for that man. You lost the game. 
You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Thank you to everyone who's supporting the show, leaving a review over on Apple Podcasts, listening on Spotify. And uh, Jason, we had a, an illustrious, majestic water bet. Uh, you, oh, you, yeah. what won. was the bet? You won with Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> That's right. I told you taking on Derek Carr, and both of these quarterbacks won uh, won the game. There you go. Uh, I expect the producers to make sure the watering happens immediately following the show. There you go. Weekly Rewind. Oh, my goodness. So much to catch up on, so much to break down, so much to react to, to overreact to, to underreact to. We'll find we out. are not going to overreact. And that is, you say it with that. me, everyone. You said that with a very uh, big pronunciation. Yeah, because that I mean, we say he's, it leading up to week He's prepping for this first He's talking part. to himself. Well, because look, the the first the huge bit of news, which uh, you got to start with the sour, the sad. Marlon Mack, is this confirmed? Because I don't want to give a confirmation. I do not believe it. Uh, it is confirmed. We've got thumbs up from the all producers. right. So Marlon Mack, if you're watching the Colts game, Colts running back, he was having a, himself a fantastic game. Got the ball passed to him a little bit. Like it was everything that you would hope for if you had drafted Marlon Mack. Uh, goes down in just crumples grabs his calf and if you've watched football for any amount of time you go yeah. oh no that looks like an Achilles injury hopefully we are wrong immediately leaves gets carted off he has in fact suffered a torn Achilles in week one so you know shot ugh. he's Marlon, done for the year Marlon Mack is done for the year and he has a really long road to recovery and he has no contract heading into next year yes so that and unfortunate but, very bad free agent market yes. for him but moving, we're the fantasy show, so what are the fantasy reactions? And it is, this is what Jace is talking about of how do you not overreact? Holy crap. This is, Jonathan Taylor was drafted in the fourth round for a player of, when is Jonathan Taylor going to emerge? And the question has been answered that immediately the opportunity is now immediately in front of him he already caught what was it six passes six for six yeah and his first touch of the game was barreling down the field it was a reception that went for like 50 yards and it was I'm, I'm gonna throw to you Jason how do you not overreact to the opportunity that Jonathan Taylor is now presented with uh that's just reacting. Uh, yeah, I think you're <laughs> yeah, exactly because you're not rea overreacting over to a stat line. You're reacting to an injury. Overreacting would be to say he's going to be the best running back in football now. Because the truth is, I think he he should be a running back one. He should be a top twelve guy. He is. He's not alone there. We saw Naeem Hines extremely involved, but now it's just it's just those two guys. And there will be enough work with a great offensive line and a lot of talent to secure fantasy points each and every game. So we don't – I mean, really, when I was saying we are not going to overreact, that was on the week as the whole, not just this oh, okay. one piece of news. Um, but, yeah, he's – I mean, Andy, you traded up for Jonathan Taylor in the league of record, and I assume now, you know, you aren't upset with that trade. Well, I – Look, I'm not rejoicing in Marlon Mack's injury. That's for sure. But it, the the acquisition of a talent like that in in your fantasy draft was on the basis of what if? What mm -hmm. if something happens? And now I yeah. did I think it'd be week 1 in the first half? No. But what if something happens? What does that mean with that offensive line? Uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor didn't run the ball well in that game in the limited chances that he had. But he caught the ball out of the backfield. Philip Rivers Managed to throw for, you know, they didn't even punt in that game. They managed to lose. He's dumping the ball off to Paris Campbell, Naeem Hines, and Jonathan Taylor all game long. The implications are humongous for this injury. Uh, Jonathan Taylor should be a top 12, top 15 back at a minimum with some really, really big games when the game script is in that favor. We saw this game as a back-and-forth matchup that the Jaguars eventually won. If they do have a lead in the game, how much Jonathan Taylor is going to get? A lot. You know, it's going to be a lot. Um, let's move on to another story Number here. Two. Le'Veon Bell suffered a hamstring injury, did not return. Uh, I saw the wise one, Adam Gaze, come out this morning and say he, he he's really mad at himself for putting him back in after he was injured. Wait, what? You didn't know that? No. Yeah. Yeah, no, he came, he, he came clean. He said, I really shouldn't have put him back into the game. 
after he was injured. Because you saw the clip. He, he had that yeah. wheel route. Lev Bell went down on the, the overthrow. And then he played again after that point. So now it's a matter of, you know, what do fantasy football uh, players do yeah. with the Le'Veon Bell injury? Because Frank Gore was involved, but Josh Adams is involved too. It's not an offense that left you wanting to watch the screen for more than a couple of seconds. So, you know, Lev Bell right now, you just got to put him on your bench and wait. Yeah, you have to – and what's unfortunate – well, the good news was Le'Veon Bell was getting all the snaps. Like, he was the guy who was out there. He wasn't getting a ton of work and was very ineffective. This was the Le'Veon Bell we saw last year. I mean, we noted as we were watching the week one, it was without – you know, the preseason didn't happen, didn't change anything. It was – wow, we are watching last year's games. Yeah. yeah. Nothing has changed. The Browns – they're are the Browns? The, Browns. Yeah. the Jets are the Jets. Like the the teams were who we thought they were. To the quote bu the Bucks are the Bucks. The Lions are the Lions. Almost across the board. I mean, unless you I don't know, say got the best wide receiver in football added to your team, you're pretty much what you were last year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hopkins! Oh, he's a Cardinal. <laughs> Sorry, Foot Clip. Uh, but yeah, Le'Veon Bell six carries for 14 yards. Uh, Frank Gore was a little bit better. And what do you do? Yeah, you just – Le'Veon Bell goes right on to the bench. Yeah, and jo Josh Adams will be an interesting name to bring up in waiver wires shows as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, George Kittle suffered a uh, leg injury right before halftime, returned to the game. Saw one of the Monday Pundays was George Little. It wasn't a big George Kittle week, um, which is surprising when you face the Arizona Cardinals. Maybe they've made some improvements in terms of defending the tight end position. But the injury – uh, Michael Thomas had a very bad game, just two receptions. In fact, between Mike Evans and Michael Thomas in that uh, huge week one matchup, it was basically, you know, nothing. Uh, Michael, Michael Thomas had the same amount of yards as Michael Thomas for the Bengals this week. Oh. oh. Both had 17 yards. Very interesting. I am so happy for the Bengals. Bengals Michael, Michael Thomas? Thomas right now to be able to say he was the – you know, he was at least tied for the best Michael Thomas but, this week. But he uh, appear, appeared to have his ankle well, he, rolled he up He definitely on. had his ankle rolled up on it. This was like right at the end of the game, and it had to be – I mean, it, it was infuriating to watch where it was the Saints are – they have the game in hand. Like It's really done, but you still have to play, you know, because they weren't at a point where they can really kneel out the clock. And then he got rolled up on. He seemed like he was okay, but it's definitely something you're going to have to monitor with injury reports through the season or through the week. Now, Mike, did you project Blake Jarwin for more than one reception? <sighs> I on did. On the course of the entire year? I, I did. We're going to go ahead and give you the mic. All right. That sucked. <laughs> that sucked a lot. What sucked, Mike? Blake Jarwin, one of my guys for the season, one of my favorite breakout tight ends. He went down in the second quarter, non-contact. Oh, we knew right away, didn't we? Everyone knew right away it was an ACL. They didn't want to. You didn't want to whisper it into the world just in case. But yeah. it look, he's he's going to be done for the season. And I'm watching Dalton Schultz and all the what could have been. They drew up a freaking tight end screen for Dalton Schultz. And I'm like, that's Jarwin's target. The amount of and it's Dalton Schultz not able to catch the ball moments uh, that I, I, I felt for you because we weren't together for that game. That game was, you know, the evening we're at home and I just kept watching the ball go near Dalton Schultz and him not be able to do anything with it. And I was like, Jarwin, Jarwin yeah. would have caught that ball. Yes. So, yeah, unfortunate. It's football. Yep, so we will talk about uh, which tight ends that I will be picking up on the way In all of your leagues. <laughs> tomorrow. Boston Scott left the field with uh, an injury. Boston Scott was one of the biggest disappointments of week one after we found out Miles Sanders was out. Yeah, I, honestly, I think it, he would have been uh, a fine fantasy play if he didn't leave the field to due to injury. He he was a little disappointing as, as it went, but, you know, the end of the game when they're down, that's dump off city to Boston Scott, but uh, not available. Devontae Parker, hamstring injury. Henry Ruggs, ankle injury. Both players that we'll be keeping an eye on. But uh, Gerald Everett, back injury in week one. Yeah, Henry Ruggs is, uh, to jump back to that real quick, he was being featured 
uh, you know, fast and often, and he was making some really big plays. So it was really unfortunate to see him go out so early. He seemed to the be game. the rookie to, to have was. on your roster. It was, yes. And then uh, David Njoku went down with a knee injury. Duke Johnson's considered week to week after the ankle sprain on Thursday. Long shot to play this week. Could come back in week three, but David Johnson's going to get all the run. Uh, it's unfortunately versus the Ravens, but so he's he going will to he, get all of the painful run. He will see a lot of opportunity. Yeah, Chubb and Kareem Hunt had a difficult time against that Ravens defensive front this week. Some players that didn't play in Week One: Debo Samuel surprisingly put on injured reserve. He's going to miss the first three weeks. Uh, we knew about Miles Sanders, Alshon Jeffrey, Bryce Love was a healthy scratch this week. And looking to tonight, Cortland Sutton, he's going to be a game time decision. Uh, so unless you have l literally Jerry Judy to pivot to, or I guess maybe somebody like Darius Slayton, you probably aren't playing that game tonight. Kenny Galladay did not play in week one, taking the wind out of my Matthew Stafford sales. Uh, any other big time weekly rewind injury news you guys I want to I believe that's discuss? it for now, yeah. All right. All right. I'm sorry about Blake. That was not the Blake out, Mike. Well, I mean, was, I guess it was, like it was but not a different the, kind. It was not the Blake out that I was hoping for. Yeah, yeah, that's disappointing. <sighs> All right. But let's, tis football. Tis football. Let's go ahead and uh, thank today's sponsors. Uh, we're talking about Shipped. Shipped is delivery done differently. They're expert shoppers pick up fresh groceries, tech gadgets, video games, and even pet supplies from local stores you love. Uh, look, we've all had a transition in terms of normal life over the last six months. And and my wife and I, we've been so thankful for Shipped and for the ability to get what we need. And the neat thing about this to me is that not only can you get everything delivered to your door in like an hour, but you are working with an active shopper that helps keep you updated with text from the aisles. And you can give quick feedback or they can find the right thing or they can ask you a question about is this what you wanted they pick in-season produce correctly like a pro and uh so with shipped you've got thoughtful shoppers convenient service peace of mind and that is the difference that shipped makes try same day delivery for yourself at shipped.com slash footballers today that's s-h-i-p-t dot com slash footballers you guys want to check that out and foot clan this is the time of year now as we switch over into week one where <laughs> if you're looking for the the best resources right. for your in-season fantasy i mean really football, you're talking to not foot clan that well, yes it's right? not not foot clan foot clan i hope you're enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> yes join the foot at join the foot.com if you support this show uh, over at jointhefoot.com, that's where all of our premium tools are. Uh, our our incredible weekly in-season snapshot tool, I couldn't live without that thing for real. Our stream finder, the target market share report, strength of schedule, all of all of our tools are available for the Foot Clan, for all the sports. And, and just recently we started with Matthew Betts, our injury podcast for the Foot Clan premiere tier, and that thing is awesome. A 15-minute breakdown that'll come out Friday night, Saturday morning after the Friday. Uh, you know, practice reports and injury reports are out, kind of giving context. Great reviews so far. Yeah. On it, the debut last week. It was awesome. So, look, you want in-season. We say well, you don't win your championship at the draft. This is where you win it. You can join up at jointhefoot.com. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. The NFC West is a it's a problem. <laughs> it's a real, real problem. Those, if, yeah. The Cardinals upset the 49ers in San Francisco. The Rams win. And then this Stud Muffin leading it off. Mm. He's is there very a, is good. there a better I don't know if he's played a better game in his career. Genuinely. I think this is the best game that Russell Wilson has ever played as a professional quarterback. 31 for 35 for 322 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Dominated the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know if you guys were aware of this. No team passed more frequently than the Seattle Seahawks in the first three quarters. 
So when you talk about Russ cooking, one for one in terms of Russell Wilson having that opportunity to uh, do this. I mean, Mm -hmm. unbelievable. 88.6% completion rate, third highest ever. It will take a more consistent passing approach for Russ to eliminate those kind of disappearing act games that he's been known for in fantasy. He always finishes the season as a top five quarterback. But last year, you saw this. Jason and Mike, they were in a uh, furious debate about Russell Wilson heading into the season. And we're both kind of right. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was uh, right that Russ was clearly a top 12 quarterback. And Mike was right that he was not good for your fantasy team because he lost you as many games as he won. But if they are letting Russ cook and they pass at a, even just above league average through the first three quarters of games, then his baseline will be extremely high. I did not see all four of his incompletions, but I remember a DK Metcalf drop yeah. that hit, uh, hit him right in the belly. That was one of his four misses, and I have to assume the other three were throwaways. I was going to say, I have to assume they were someone else's fault. It wasn't Russell's I, fault. I mean, just, just absolute perfection. All right, here's our first. here's the first real opportunity for overreaction, in my opinion. You ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers takes on the Minnesota Yikes defense. And uh, 32 for 44, 364 and four. Aaron Rodgers, absolutely dominant performance. One of the best fantasy quarterbacks of the week. He was only started in 31% of leagues. And at one point he threw two touchdown passes in a 24-second span. He looked, But it's week. It is week it's one. It's week one. And he did this last year in week five or whatever it was against the Raiders after some bad performances. And we know the Vikings defense – this may be a refrain we sing every week. That, that's where I was going to go. But, I mean, number one credit, Aaron Rodgers looked fantastic. Yes. Like some of these, uh, I think it was the like a sidearm touchdown pass to Alan Lazard was, holy crap, it's Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. He's still doing those things. So that was, great. that was really fun to watch. But, yes, the, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, I will not be shocked to find them on our Stream Finder tool <laughs> as the as a team that you want your quarterbacks and your wide receivers to target like it's there there is a problem so it and to echo what you were saying Andy Aaron Rodgers dominated bad defenses last year so uh you know, I I I am allowing people that's a bad word to use but I am with people let's be hopeful that Aaron Rodgers is back let's be let's be hopeful that when his team traded up in the first round to take his replacement that he had he took it personal and that he is going that he focused in on the season he gets to play Detroit next week which I'm not really scared of Detroit uh at this point so I'm with that then you get the Saints not not necessarily a great matchup but then you get the Falcons right after that like Aaron Rodgers through the first four games he will probably end up as a top 10 quarterback he was a fringe starting candidate no matter what so if you want right. to buy in right here and say, look, last year, some of the inconsistency, lost Devontae Adams for part of the year. Like the narrative is there. Alan Lazard taking a step forward, MVS. Uh, great first week for Aaron Rodgers. Detroit, like you said, looks pretty good. Lamar Jackson, um, you talked about last year being, this year being like last year. Lamar Jackson, still Lamar yeah, Jackson. He's, he's very good. 25 or 20 for 25 for 275 and three, another 45 on the ground. Only 45 rushing yards? Man. What a loser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh Allen, everybody's favorite start in week one, delivered in a huge way, uh, 33 for 46. I think that is the headline there. I mean, they were well in control of this game, and yet he still threw the ball 46 times, 312 passing yards, two touchdowns. You saw the difference Stephon Diggs made in terms of moving this offense, and he, he has a license to run yeah. at any moment in time. And he's good at it. I loved watching the Bills play football. I mean, it was against the Jets, so you know, you, you just like we're saying, I don't, we don't want to take anything away, but we have to have the context of it wasn't the the most difficult matchup here, but it was wonderful. It looked like Josh Allen could. 
do no wrong other than fumbling. The, the fumbles. The fumbles were. They were hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. I he mean, makes us laugh. They, sometimes the, the goofiest uh, body control of all time. But uh, Stephon Diggs made a difference. And oh, honestly. Excellent. Um, John Brown. Will, will, he looked great. It looked like a one-two punch with him and Stephon Diggs. In fact, I believe John Brown had one more target than uh, Diggs. So someone you could maybe play on a regular basis. But if you're telling me he's going to be throwing the ball this much, 46 times, and he's got the running baseline. But, but Jason, he plays the Dolphins next week. Well, the Dolphins are much better than last year, but still yeah. bottom yeah, no, it's, the it's question great will, The question will be for those 46 attempts, his running backs were not effective in this matchup. I, I mean, uh, between Singletary. That's why he took it on himself. Well, that's what I mean. Like, if they get the running game going, I do not expect that we're going to see Josh Allen up in the 40s and attempts very frequently. Or will we? Or, wi or will we? This is the, the year of let, insert quarterback, cook. They just let them all throw the ball. They should. Just get rid of running backs. If they keep giving the ball to Zach Moss, then their running game will be ineffective. So Both, Josh Allen yeah. will continue. All right. Um, Mitch Trubisky is in our studs. I'm not sure, man. <laughs> he he stunk. <laughs> you watched this game and you saw but the worst quarterback though. out there. We were shocked right? when he didn't come out of the second half. That was a dime like, to Anthony Miller. It was it was he at, does he has those from time Nick to time. Nick Foles was gonna have to start the second half, right? No. At what point do you put Foles in? And then something happened, and he did. He, pl I mean, you have to give him credit for what he did do. But he looked so bad for three the first touchdowns, three no picks, and and a great fantasy day, and that's what we're talking about, fantasy football. Yeah, he well, he was he pulled the inverse Carson Wentz. Oh my goodness, we'll talk about Carson Wentz. <laughs> I apologize to Eagles fans. I tweeted. I mean, Carson Wentz started that you game blew it. on fire. I tweeted the best player on the field so far today is Carson Wentz, and from that moment it, on, and it was factual when you it tweeted was it factual, out. and then it was super not. Yeah, it did not. Uh, Trubisky pulled a Space Jam and stole all his powers. Yeah, it was a complete flip flop. So, Trubisky, shout out for the great fantasy day. No interceptions, which is crazy. But then I think about those Are first they three start quarters, three you, or four and zero. Oh? They've got the Giants next week. Then Atlanta. We'll see what happens tonight with the Giants. But they've got a shot at home against the Giants next week. I'd have my, I'd be betting on the Bears. Yeah, we'll see. We, we still haven't seen the Giants, so we'll, we'll see. It's fair. Mitch Trubisky MVP. All right. <laughs> Kyler Murray oh. at San Francisco, 26 for 40, 230 yards, one touchdown. Had a second one that was uh, uh, called back. Hopkins got dragged down on the one-inch line. And then the big headline was the rushing yardage. Holy I mean, 91 crap. rushing yards. He was which, over 100. Which is yeah. nuts. Look, all right, fantasy people, uh, NFL, whoever I need to speak to about this. Are you talking about the – Kneel downs? Kneel down yards should not count against a quarterback. It is – it's ridiculous. If, if you want to put it in some kind of official box score somewhere to <laughs> hide away, I don't care. Fine. I Keep, agree with you. But, like, for fantasy purposes, it should not count. It's, it's a – I'm reason, giving up. The reason this is coming up uh, in that level of uh, anger is that for the first time I, I can I, remember – Cliff Kingsbury had Kyler Murray take the kneel downs in shotgun. <laughs> Never so seen he it. went from 100 rushing yards to 91 on two plays. So he lost nine rushing yards. On, on two, and not just plays. These are positive plays in the context of the game. They are doing the right thing. Yeah. I mean, you should at least snap it to, like, the fullback and let him take the knee. <laughs> if you're going to do it in shotgun. There's the answer. Or a wide – oh, man. A yeah. backup wide receiver. But Kyler had a monster day again against San Francisco. But let's oh. talk about Cam Newton, 15 for 19. Oof. Didn't yes. really seem to have, um, you know, you would have expected a hopefully better passing day against Miami. The, Doesn't matter. But uh, 15 rushing attempts is the headline. Cam Newton's never had a season when he's played 16 games and not been a top five quarterback. Uh, so a healthy Cam Newton getting the opportunity – you know, that's what we wanted to see. When we wondered about Cam Newton being the quarterback of New England, it was, will he run the ball? Because when he runs the ball, he's Cam Newton. Yep, this is why Cam Newton was 
Uh, he just de facto into my favorite late round quarterback. You guys know this. I drafted him all over the place in our leagues together as the last quarterback off the board. Late round, I want a quarterback that runs. And we weren't sure. You couldn't say it with 100% confidence, is Cam Newton going to run? Is he actually healthy? 15 for 75 and two touchdowns. And to, you know, like to give context to be fair to Cam Newton, he should have had a passing touchdown. But Nikhil Harry decided that as he's going into the end zone, instead of scoring points for his team, for the New England Patriots, he's, he figured, ah, we, we have enough points. I'm just going to throw this ball through the end zone and turn it over. I actually think he did it on accident, Mike. Well, tomato, tomato. Okay. Uh, other quarterbacks I'm going to mention quickly, Matt Ryan had a, a million passing yards, 54 passing attempts. This is exactly what Matt Ryan always does. He, you can count on him for yardage. Three wide receivers with over 100 yards each. Uh, Gardner Minshew. Oh. Gardner Minshew was 19 for 20 in this game. Just 173 total passing yards. Three touchdowns. He's the first player to ever throw at least three touchdowns and complete 95% of his passes. Oh, in week one? It is such a specific stat. What a stat. stupid stat that it is. is. <laughs> you know. Whose we, first we go, name is Gardner. We always go into week one, you know, wondering. Who's going to throw three touchdowns at a 95% completion <laughs> rate? Okay, it's Ky not ever. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, why do you got to put that stat in when I could have been over here just gloating about Gardner Minshew playing extremely well and winning the game? And then you got to submarine the whole argument with this just way too specific statistic. Yeah, that does make that does kind of take away from the Gardner Minshew. Yeah. Flex. Except he did win and he threw one incomplete pass. And when you say he did win, you're not just, I mean, I, you know, obviously week one, but last year too, he actually won games with the J Jaguars. The, he is playing for his job, right? Because if right. they're supposed to be in the mix, you know, for the stud rookie quarterback to replace him. And if he wins games, he's no longer in the mix. Yeah, they have Tennessee on the road next week. So that'll be interesting for that'll Gardner to see, see what he can do. But then Miami and the Bengals, this is what we highlighted Gardner as if you want to take a late round chance on Gardner Minshew he has a lot of very positive matchups to start the season running back studs to talk about oh hi Joshua yes Josh Jacobs mm. 25 for 93 three touchdowns four for 46 yes that's, that's the big news that is big news I'm not sure he had a game last year with four receptions I'm almost six, positive he didn't six targets this is what we were saying that coming into year two for great running backs who didn't catch the ball in week one, they get utilized in the passing game more uh, in, in year two. And so Andy's my guy looking pretty good. 76.6% .6 of snaps more than in any game in 2019 to start the year. Now let's see you do it against New Orleans and New England and Buffalo in the next three. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be tough. Christian McCaffrey, Raheem Moster, Zeke. Big games from those three guys. Most are really the majority of his game was made on one huge play, a 76-yard passing, mm -hmm. uh, receiving touchdown. Uh, we talked a little bit this weekend. Most are in that position where uh, I, I wouldn't say that you have to go like trade or you know Raheem Mostert, but there is an opportunity to cash in on a game where Tevin Coleman had limited reps. McKinnon actually looked good, and he took all but one of the third down snaps in this game. So if Moser gives up some of first and second down to Tevin Coleman and McKinnon has a you know stranglehold on third down, you might be able to cash in here. They do have the Jets, Giants, and Eagles next. So I mean, Moser is the he was the same guy he was last year. Where it's not he's so fast. It's, it's he? not as much work as you're hoping that Raheem Moser is going to get. Now the five targets was pretty nice. Yeah, but I I agree with you that I don't I'm not expecting five targets a week for Moser, but his touches, they seem to be capped in generally in that 12 to 15 range. You're going to get great games like this, but you will also get uh, – like Mostert's going to find his way into Monday pun day as having bad games probably just as much as his good games. Yeah, and when you say he's fast, Andy, uh, per next-gen stats, he reached a top speed of 22.73 miles per hour, which is the fastest speed oh, wow. over the last three seasons. I didn't know that, Jason. He's very fast. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the nice thing. If you have limited touches, but you are, yep. you know, C.J. Spiller top speed, you can still have those games. C.J. Spiller? Did I just reference C.J. Spiller? That's the reference. Not like 
I know, I just remember him getting limited touches and doing things sometimes. All right, tomorrow's the big waiver show. Mm-hmm. But Naeem Hines, mm-hmm. seven for twenty eight on the ground, eight for forty five through the air. Highly debated player this past off season, but you know we believed in Naeem Hines because of Philip Rivers. And the tendency, and it didn't just extend to Naeem Hines. It extended to Malcolm or uh, Marlon, Marlon Mack, Mack, and it extended to Jonathan Taylor because when in doubt, he finds that running back route. If he <laughs> wants to throw to his team, it's got to be under 10 yards. Thank you, Mike. Yep. I mean, he, you know, he is really good at throwing under 10 yards and keeping it to his team. So I think the running backs are going to be – a great option, and if he wants to air it out, then um, that other team is in play for the for every single one of those balls. Okay, it, they, was, it wasn't a pretty performance. What was yeah, what was interesting and nice to see if you're just looking for fantasy purposes here, Hines was not just this wasn't like oh next man up Marlon Mack leaves the game now let's get Hines involved. Oh no, Hines was already a large part of the game plan. He was in. Uh, uh, goal right line at, packages. Too. He was in goal line. He was in right away. Like he was in before Jonathan Taylor even saw his first professional snap. Yeah, this was supposed to be a one-two punch, right? And it was a one-two punch, but it was supposed to be with Jonathan Taylor, and it wasn't. It was with Naeem Hines. You're, that's a, such a good point to bring up, Mike. Well, and and to be fair, Taylor, even though he didn't play in the first half, had more carries than Naeem Hines. So it's more. It, it's about those well, receiving opportunities yes. for Naeem Hines. Yeah, I'm. I'm not saying Hines takes over the primary rushing situation i'm saying that Hines was a game plan for philip rivers to check down to his running back and those opportunities will go up dalvin cook alvin Kamara, clyde edwards alaire we've talked about these guys before and they're very good at football chris carson only six carries in this game yeah. this is a bit of a let, let let me get your reaction to chris carson because he only had 12 total touches six of them through the air which was great he scored twice so the stat line incredible he only played 28 snaps in this entire game. How, you know. Concerned. Concerned. Yes, you, you certainly need to be concerned. If I could. Uh, so I'm, you would it, react to this with a, I, a, a sell? I No, it, this is not. I'm immediately going out and trading Chris Carson. This is not that type of overreaction. But it's a, I'm certainly going to put feelers out or be very receptive if somebody sees Chris Carson's stat line. They drafted Austin Eckler or someone who had a lower fantasy output, and they, and they want to immediately go grab a running back. I got a trade for you. I would be willing to listen to it. What is it? Mike, would you trade Chris Carson for Jonathan Taylor? Yes. Okay. Yes, I would do that. Cause would you include something with Chris Carson to go get Jonathan Taylor? Probably not. Okay. Uh, and but he, you'd put that out there. Here's what is concerning, because Carlos Hyde ended up with more carries. Travis Homer. Remember Travis Homer? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. He was on the field for 13 snaps. Both Carlos Hyde and Travis Homer saw carries inside the five. You know who did not? Starting running back, Chris Carson. That's why you have to at least have a little bit of concern. When your running back was on the field that low and received that little of opportunities, then you should at least be mildly but, concerned. But he also looked good. Sure. And so it wasn't any, you know, opportunity and talent. The talent side was there. So this is one of those where, yeah, you can go out and look to sell, but you're not looking to sell. You're looking to sell high. You're looking to capitalize and upgrade the position, not just sell to get rid of him because you're afraid he's going to suck. And I got cold feet with Chris Carson in our League of Record draft. I wasn't. I went James Conner over him, and I I was worried because of the. Uh, I thought DJ Dallas would be involved on third down. I didn't expect it to be Travis Homer, but I thought that they would share the load a little bit. And then right before game time, uh, Pete Carroll talked about maybe kind of a hot hand approach with Carlos Hyde. So it, it's a great game from Carson production-wise, but like Jason said, you need to go try to sell high because you know New England and Dallas on, on the docket next could be difficult. Yep. So um, waiver wire show tomorrow. Malcolm Brown's going to be in the discussion, in my opinion. I uh, watched every snap of that oh, football game. Absolutely, I'm a, I'm a big Cam Akers fan out of college. I will tell you, your eyes aren't lying to you. Malcolm Brown was definitively the better running back 
on every one of his snaps compared to every one of Cam Akers' snaps last night. 18 carries for 79 and 2. Three for 31 on four targets, which is a headline there. Designed um, screen plays for Malcolm Brown. Two touchdowns. Uh, right now, he looked like they had Todd Gurley in the in the normal rotation. Yeah, they seem like they weren't missing an absolute ton. The the one concern here for Malcolm Brown for how in you are going to be on Malcolm Brown from uh, at, going in on for the waiver wire. Akers still touched the ball a ton. He was not nearly as efficient as Malcolm Brown, but he was still heavily involved. He, Akers could easily end up taking this job. And on top of that, at Philly, at Buffalo, I, that's not really prime matchups for, for a running back in a timeshare. It's going to be interesting because all the high-value situations so far have been Brown. Goal line, sure. third down, waste the clock out. But, uh, you know, he, he Akers is a rookie. Yeah, to me, Malcolm Brown looked like C.J. Anderson, which I was a fan of back in the day. <laughs> like good C.J. Anderson yes, or like, bad yes, C.J. Anderson? No, like good. When I talk about C.J. Anderson, I'm talking about he good C.J. Anderson. He only remembers the good. I only yeah. remember the good, Andy. I was a big C.J. Anderson fan. All right, let's go through these wide receivers here. Um, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, Russell Gage, all with nine receptions from Matt Ryan, all with over 100 yards, all with 12 targets. Uh, they all went back to the locker room very pleased with themselves. In a loss. In a loss, yeah. Um, so, Russell Gage, he, he'll probably be talked about tomorrow. He was somebody that, um, you know, filled the target vacuum. Yeah, his name was supposed to be Hayden Hurst, but it was Russell Gage being used as that uh, next target guy. Uh, obviously, they're not going to play the Seahawks every week. I think that was part of it. Russ being on fire meant they're going to have to air it out both directions but it was I mean what a what a falcon day this was yeah Julio Jones with 157 yards and no touchdowns Calvin Ridley with two touchdowns it was just like as expected yeah and Matt Ryan with 450 passing yards Devontae Adams is good so oh, is yeah. DeAndre Hopkins both of them with a hundred, uh, 14 receptions 150 plus yards 16 targets for Hopkins 17 for Adams um now, so far, Hopkins' target share is up. Yes. Look, we, we, I needed to clarify something about my concerns for DeAndre Hopkins' target share. Uh, I was worried that what he received in Houston was actually too low. Like, he was going to come to hmm, Arizona uh, hmm, and get way hmm. – 40% of his routes. I mean, uh, this, it was this very was, smart. This was well, – And his target share was higher than that. His target share was actually 44% on the week. 40% – Four percent of the total targets went to DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, this is, uh, and he it, caught almost all of them. If he was always open, and it, I, I look, Christian Kirk was not getting open. Larry Fitzgerald, are we playing the music again? <laughs> yeah. So I was trying not to overreact, but this will be uh, a rotten, stinky egg all over my face if we're seeing 40% of the targets going to Hopkins. Yeah, it's, it's one week, but it's the week that you would have expected more of a struggle. Richard sure. Sherman, San Francisco, first week with Kyler. Oh, oh. Yeah, not a problem for that. Think Bill O'Brien's got any regrets? Oh, um, no. No, that man doesn't no. regret anything. <laughs> all right, Adam Thielen, big week. Robbie Anderson, Jamison Crowder, uh, both had big touchdowns, yeah. Robbie Anderson, we have to remember, he's been dealing with uh, number two for a long time. So coming out from beneath <laughs> that situation, crawling out <clears throat> of the mud. I'm just saying, there's no stink on him anymore. And six for one, fifteen and one targets evenly distributed among that's, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Robbie Anderson. That's the bigger news. Is the and Robbie Anderson's as explosive as? as DJ Moore is. So if opportunity is there, he could still be a good player. Yeah. Only one week of seeing this completely brand new offense for us with Matt or head coach, Matt jaw rule, but it was a very even distribution between the three wide receivers, which uh, I mean, for, for fantasy purposes, that, that can turn into trubs because you're just always chasing the dragon of who had the huge week. I do wonder if this is going to be the recipe for Carolina, some close uh, kind of, High flying type of games where they can't quite outscore the opponent, but are going to have a lot of passing opportunities. Um, it'll be interesting. MVS and Alan Lazard, 
first reaction to the uh, non Devontae Adams weapons? Uh, I mean, who do, you, who do you want in this offense? Four for ninety six for MBS, four for sixty three for Alan Lazard. Both of them probably on waiver wires. Yeah, if I had to pick one of them, I think I would still lean on the Lazard side. But I, I think you could flip a coin. I'm going to pick neither of them. Uh, I still think that this was more on the Minnesota Vikings than on themselves. Uh, and and I, I could be wrong there, but I don't think I'm rushing out to grab either one, even though they, they both had fine fantasy games week one. Okay. And then tight ends, Mark Andrews is great. Dallas Goddard is kind of the one I want to talk about. Eight for yes. 101 and one on nine targets. Ertz was just three for 18. Uh, he did have seven targets, but yeah. three for 18 – he, very disappointing, especially since the touchdown came very early in the game for Zach Hurts. It seemed like, great, this fourth, fifth round tight end that I, I drafted is going to be sensational for me week one. Oh, except the tight end, too, is the one who's coming through is it? with the huge game. Is Are you saying, is he the, is tight, he end the tight end, too? Yeah, he's the tight end, too. Okay. Uh, look, we, we've seen these games before. And again, it's re week one. If it happens in week four, we're like, we have, our eyes. but I don't know that we've seen these combined with all of the very negative contract talks that are spilling yes. out of Philadelphia. You it's have true. Zach Ertz getting in, are allegedly getting in arguments with the with the brass for yeah. Philadelphia. He's seeing everybody get paid, and they aren't paying him. Let me ask you this, Mike: Are you uh, are you dropping Blake Jarwin for Dallas Goddard? Will you will you see what happens? I here? would. Be willing to do that, yes. I'm afraid you might say that to any tight end I say out loud, though, <laughs> right now, in comparison You're to... afraid that I may say that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's move on. Stakers, Stakers of, of the, the week. week, presented, presented by, by Odor Eaters. Eaters. Let's get stinky. Well, we won't get stinky for too long, but right. um, let's do this. Let, let me set the precedent here for Stinkers of the Week this week, which we're excited to bring uh, back your way, sponsored also by... Number two. Uh, and so <laughs> I want I want to know if you're worried or not. So I'll bring up some bad stat lines. Everybody has a bad week, but I want to know if you think it's indicative of a, um, a, tr uh, a trend on the way or maybe something you saw on film mm -hmm. that made you believe that fantasy football players should be worried. Uh, at the quarterback position... Uh, Jared Goff last night, 20 for 31, 275, no passing touchdowns, which happened quite a bit last year. You had uh, these games where Jared Goff had okay numbers, but just somehow did not you know, get into the end zone. Well, you know, last year the reason was because of Todd Gurley's insane rushing touchdown numbers. They just had the ability to score on the ground. And lo and behold, week one, that's the same thing that happened. I'm Malcolm to... Brown, with two rushing touchdowns, uh, took the scoring opportunities away from Jared Goff. I'm not too worried about the future of Goff. I'm not worried about it either. As I mean, you drafted him to be a quarterback, too, if you have him. like you, You're in a super flex league, or you took the chance on him very, very late. Did Robert Woods go down on like the one or something? I. Not quite the one, but he he had a, he had a play where he was he got very close. I he, mean, in the first drive, yeah. You just it with the touchdowns went to Malcolm Brown on these really easy uh, two yard in rushes. So no, I'm not overly concerned. Outside about of Robert it. Woods, God. there really wasn't any uh, pass catching no weapon that had any real numbers there. Higby, Cup, um, Everett, Van Jefferson, and none of them. Reynolds, yeah, Reynolds. Um, so not very worried. What about Dak? Are you worried about Dak? One passing touchdown. I am not. Should have had another. Uh, he, he, what? Where did you guys weigh in on that? The Gallup catch. I mean, to me, that that should not have been. Oh, a call. The, the offensive pi. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's a veteran. I I give Ramsey credit for for the way he. Was some uh, showmanship. Yeah. I mean, either was, he is really was, weak or he played that up a little bit. No, he he played that up. There were two calls that I took issue with because I feel like if you're in the last thirty seconds of a game or something like that. It, you can't call ticky tack. It, you've got to call the penalties that are that are real and legit. But if it's kind of like these guys are playing a little extra hard, you you got to let the players make the plays. And that would have been the AJ Green touchdown at the end and the uh, mm. Michael Gallup. I feel like the Gallup play. one just equaled out. You're always going to have inconsistency 
at the with the referees and then Jared Goff had that interception where he was hitting the face. Yes. That they didn't fix. So That was insane that they didn't see that. Uh Drew Brees kind of a, a stinker. I mean, one for uh, 160 and 2. Yeah, it Michael was, Thomas wasn't around. It was very bizarre, but uh, the Buccaneers are a good defense. I'm not going to bail out on Drew Brees yet. Carson Wentz from the moment I tweeted on, very bad. <laughs> Um, if you stop tweeting about him, maybe I'm back in. I'll I'll try. I'm sorry, Carson. Look, they we we kind of expected this once things you know trended that all of a sudden oh Lane Johnson not playing. Yeah, I mean their their offensive line was already a problem heading into Week One. Then you lose another starting lineman and Boston Scott, and you combine that with Washington is very strong up front, and they got better. They added Chase Young, who's just a uh, look. This dude is a stud. This yeah. kid is going to be great. You knew that that was going to be a problem for yeah, you, for Carson Wentz, and it caught up to him in the second half. You did, but it's not like next week he's playing against Aaron Donald or anything. So I think you're going to – oh, hold up. <laughs> Wait, Wait a he's minute. playing against Aaron Donald. Maybe sit Carson Wentz next week with this offensive line worries because I think part of the problem for Dak was Aaron Donald. He was, I mean, part of the problem for any quarterback play against Aaron, Is Aaron Donald. Donald. Yes. He's, un he's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Baker Mayfield. Oh, yeah, so nah. you you can go two directions here. This is same old Baker from last year, one eighty nine and one. By the way, he targeted Odell Beckham ten, ten ten times, and they only completed three passes. This was disgusting, but it was Baltimore. It was Baltimore, and it was the same old show for Baker Mayfield that we saw last year. It was the same show for Odell Beckham, where uh, the Beckham had two drops. It's a bad show. Uh, yeah, it was. I, w I wanted to change the channel. On this show, I get a refund on that ticket, and uh, this this is one where you got to try not to overreact. But it's hard. It's going to be it's, really difficult to not overreact to that. It's exactly how I feel. I keep telling myself it was Baltimore. It was Baltimore. But then you watch and you're like, but what? It was last. You saw this. I mean, he just looked identical to last. My year. my take on the Browns was that you have to show me first. So if you saw what you saw from the Browns last year, you've got to prove you're not that team this year. Yes. 0 for 1 on that attempt. Yeah. So, so you're out until uh, until they win you over. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know what the opposite of DeAndre Hopkins moving to a new team is. Odell Beckham. It's Odell Beckham. Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, look, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's playing the Patriots. Well. It didn't always hurt him. No, I, I know, but no one's – okay. I, okay. I don't know why Moving we're crapping on. on Fitzpatrick. Because he had a bad game. Uh, <laughs> running backs, are you worried? We're going to laundry list this real quick. Are you worried about Nick Chubb? No. no. Worried about Joe Mixon, 19 for 69 against the Chargers defensive front? No, I'm not. Devin Singletary? Yeah. Yep. You see, the thing is, is he did have 14 touches in this game. To me, I'm a little bit encouraged by that. I wasn't sure how – I mean, make no mistake, Zach Moss was heavily involved, but Moss didn't look good either. Yeah, it, the, so, seven, the seven targets are encouraging for Singletary, yeah. not encouraging all the off-season hype from their camp. of. As soon as we're in, by the goal line, Zach Moss is going to be the guy. True. That turned out to be very true, so that is concerning. All right, here's a big one. Mark Ingram <sighs> is 10 for 29. Are you actually concerned here? I am concerned because the eyeballs said he looked different. He looked slow. You know, we we had on a very recent show, I think it was maybe on Friday, the question was asked, can J.K. Dobbins play his way into more of the starter? And it was like best case scenario is, a, is just an equal time share with Mark Ingram because Mark Ingram is very good. He did not look good, uh, and this was not a defense. He just looked a little slower, a little older, and I was surprised. And then Dobbins also looked great. Well, looked, Dobbins was not great on the ground. Well, but but he was he scored twice. He scored twice. That's the big problem. Is in yeah. seven carries, he was getting high leverage Huge opportunities, problem. and that the, that's where Mark Ingram was great. And there was concerns for Mark Ingram's touchdown regression, and so far that has uh, kicked him right in the butt. I'm going to give it one more week. I want to see what happens next week against Houston to Fair. to decide whether this team is ready to move forward with more of a committee. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, are you worried about Antonio Gibson? Only 23% of the snaps, nine for 36. I am only two targets. I, it feels really bad. Cause you're 
it's week one. The hype was real. You're really, really hoping that Antonio Gibson is going to break out immediately. But this is – I am definitely taking a breath saying we expected them to be in a committee. Uh, we expect veterans to get some run. And no one was necessarily great. I mean, Peyton Barber – I mean, I I don't know. I don't I don't like the argument of you're trying to grind out the clock, so that's why you're 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 getting one to two yards per carry. Like, if you're really grinding, if you're good and you're grinding out the clock, you're you're instilling your will on the other team. You're not just getting shut down. You're not taking three downs and punting the ball like Peyton Barber. What, but can you trust Gibson in week two no, against I, Carolina? So at this point, I'm going to put Antonio Gibson on my bench. I'm going to let him simmer. Let the rookie get some more time, get some more trust. I mean, J.D. McKissick was very inefficient, and Peyton Barber was only good for fantasy because he pulled in the the two touchdowns. Gibson did get a goal line attempt. He was unfortunately stuffed. I mean, Gibson gets in on that one particular carry. This is a very different story I, that's I, happening. I'm with you. I, it's just a holding pattern for me. Yeah, I will say that the the Washington victory is probably – because of the context of Ron Rivera and the, the the deficit, and then him having the IV because he's been doing chemotherapy, right? That's a pretty amazing week one storyline. I it is, you know, it's at the top of the list. Uh, oh, this is this is one I'm gonna hit the button on. Yes, Chris Thompson. This one I'm actually concerned about. Chris Thompson was. Uh, Mr. Invisibility. What happened? No, yes. You know, James Robinson was the only running back to get 100% of his team's rushing attempts this past week. And that's why it's concerning. I mean, that is, this, that's a shocker. No carries for Chris Thompson. Two targets. Gone. Uh, yeah. The, the, the negative game script never really came into play for Jacksonville. There was where you had, you were, it was Chris Thompson time. But this one is, in fact, very concerning that James Robinson was fully the dude and uh and he looks so, fine and yeah no he like, i mean he's not he doesn't wow you with his athleticism but huge college production profile i mean he can get it done and he looked as good as leonard fournette put it he, that way he, he looked better than leonard fournette looked this week uh but is, is chris thompson cuttable probably it, he may probably. be someone we, i was going to ask the question tomorrow i was going to save you a day well i but yeah let me sleep on it you might have to take the l might have to take the L on Chris Thompson and move on. It, we say stay water. We're not going to get everything right. And if we're wrong on Chris Thompson, we're wrong. You yep. move on. You find the next player for your team. It's it's disappointing. I mean, mm -hmm. um, this that's one way to keep him free from injury. Give him <laughs> give him two <laughs> targets true. on the on the year. Uh, Matt Breida, Jordan Howard, they both look like they're probably cuttable too. I mean, Miles Gaskin ends up being the surprise. Bell cow on a stank fest. This is a, a abandoned ship, man. Yeah, abandoned the ship on the Miami backfield. Yeah, and now Devontae Parker's injured too. Yeah, abandoned ship on the Dolphins. Yeah, because not only is is Devontae Parker injured, but it's a reaggravation of the the hamstring right. that was keeping him out. Yeah, so that's bad. Not good. All right, uh, wide receivers. Are you worried, Michael Thomas? No. Are you worried, a... Odell Beckham Jr.? Yes. yes. I like the target share. Ten targets against Baltimore, so My, Michael Thomas is a buy low to me. The same way that we're saying that you know, there's Chris Carson and um, Raheem Mostert are possible sell highs. If the person that drafted Michael Thomas is that one guy in every league that just goes by what happened the last week, oh Emmanuel Sanders got the targets or whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna send an offer in every league for Michael Thomas and just see if I could steal him. I right. agree. Uh, the the fears of a bad, hard to watch Chargers offense came to fruition. Keenan Allen, are you worried? Four for thirty seven. Yes. Yes. The, it, I saw someone tweet this morning. Apologies, I don't remember who tweeted it, but they said if Tyrod won the quarterback camp battle, how bad did Justin Herbert look in camp? I know we got to see highlights and things of him spinning the ball in hard knocks, but Tyrod looked. Bad, like real bad, and that was. Against I don't think it's just the Bengals. I think it's a, a mindset thing. He's a leader. Tyrod's no a great leader. He's not a great quarterback. Well, this was so. I was think you rough. gave him. They gave him the first shot, and maybe uh, I, I thought Tyrod was going to keep it all year long. He's got to take on Kansas City next week. 
Uh, was it week three that Baker got in there? The last time that Tyrod was a quarterback? Yeah, week yeah week two or three, yeah. Could be looking at that if yep. he has a big stinker. Uh, Mike Evans? I mean, you've got to be worried about the injury uh, thing, but this was already a matchup where Mike Ev healthy Mike Evans has been shut down before. Cooper Cup, four for 40, five targets. Uh, mildly. I'm not too worried there. Yeah, we said uh, Robert Woods was the only one with a okay stat line. Cooper Cup makes his makes his hay in the end zone, and there were no passing touchdowns for golf. So we got to wait and see what happens there. DJ Moore, mildly, but nine targets is nice. Yeah, I'm not it, concerned. Exactly, about Moore. I don't want to overreact on the fact that Robbie Anderson was more involved and Curtis Samuel was, and it was pretty even. I don't want to overreact there because nine targets, he he should have had a better game. T. Y. Hilton four for fifty three on nine targets. I don't think that that's really a nope big deal nope terry mclaurin five for 61 we you know they won the game but dwayne haskins he looked like he was still learning the position he also flip-flopped though with carson wentz the, the second half of haskins was far better than the first half looked like we need you need to bench this guy immediately all this hullabaloo that haskins is much improved is you're a, you're a bunch of bold-faced liars but he was far better in the second half so this is i'm, I'm not worried about mclaurin at all i have mild Mild worry, but totally on Haskins. Deshaun Jackson was just 5 for 39. Did not do the week one explosion. He did not. Jalen Rager took a couple deep uh, targets away from him, and Jackson was targeted on some deep balls. They just didn't connect. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jalen Rager finished with uh, one reception. That is for, right. Uh, for how I'm many? pretty sure. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the NFL. <laughs> If you're in a league with uh, exactly 55-yard bonuses. you Congratulations. You yeah. won your week. All right. Here's one that I actually am uh, I'm intrigued by. CeeDee Lamb was the better wide receiver. Now Gallup had the play called back, and it would have turned things around a little bit. But five receptions on six targets for Lamb, three on five targets for Gallup. Um, Cooper had 10 catches in this game, so he was, he was out front. But do you have any concern about just not knowing where the ball is going to go? I it, I think it's it's fair and for Cooper, like Cooper, you know, not it wasn't garbage time, but this was catch up time. He started getting force fed at the very end of the game through three quarters. Amari Cooper really had done nothing as well. Fourteen targets for Cooper. I, you know, I'm I'm not debating that yeah, Amari yeah. Cooper. I'm just saying that through the through three quarters, you were disappointed with everybody not named Ezekiel Elliott. I think that when we started the show right before Jason asked us if we thought the game was a little bit boring um, there wasn't splash plays in the game it was a competitive game but I think to your point Jay there just wasn't those splash type of big plays and you didn't see you know no explosiveness on offense it was, both teams were predicated on heavy run games mm -hmm. yeah and I I'm not too worried about I'm not worried about Michael Gallup I'm also excited about C.D. Lamb at the same time. I think that Blake Jarwin going down is going to mean that those three wide receivers are all fantasy relevant. Yeah. That means C.D. Lamb should really be on the radar. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yes, I totally agree with you. Yeah, they, they remind me of maybe what you saw a couple years ago with the three wide receivers for the Los Angeles Rams if this offense can you know get moving more. I'm going to give you four names. I want to know cut or not. Christian Kirk. Cut. Cut. Brian Edwards. Cut. Probably cut, yeah. Brandon Cooks. If Not. you drafted him, you're going to hold him. Nikhil Harry, 5 for 39, 6 targets, fumbled at the goal line. Otherwise, could have had a touchdown. Not going to cut him yet. I agree. All right, tight ends. Um, some stinky weeks. Mike Gesicki, Rob Gronkowski, Tyler Higby, Hayden Hurst, Austin Hooper. I'm sticking with Tyler Higby. He was still on the field a ton, and Gerald Everett is dealing with an injury now. Yeah, I went back, and um, I didn't get through the full breakdown this morning, but I was breaking down personnel groupings. They came out, I mean, the first two or three snaps of the game, Cooper Cup was not on the field. They were in 12 personnel. They ran out of it. Um, but, you know, Everett had a few targets too. I'm not – I think Higby's fine. Gronkowski was invisible. Gesicki, tough matchup, uh, didn't do much. Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst concerns me because he's still in that category of show me uh, a good game before yeah. I before I can trust or believe any hype, and he hasn't done it yet. Yep, and it's that, a game with 450 passing yards. Yeah, that's right. that's the hard part. He's brand new to the team. You're really hoping you can see it week one so you can have that confidence. But I agree. Maybe you want to hold off a little bit. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Mm -hmm. 
We want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring the show. They've got a special auction right now for NFL jerseys. Pristine Auction. Like an oxen? Yeah. Like from <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. Yoke, yoke yourself. If you do need to get some oxen for a like an Oregon like, Trail journey, see, if you're in the Oregon you, need, Trail. you need pristine oxen. Mm. Are you a banker? Are you a farmer? We could go for hours. <laughs> do you want Once we shift to Oregon oxen, Trail. Or do you want pristine, pristine oxen? Now you won't. Look, are you going, are you going to fjord it? <laughs> are you like, what are you doing with that river? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ford the river. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's get back to the, <laughs> the real promotion here. Special auction for NFL jerseys through September 17th, $20. That's where the bidding starts. So you can get a signed jersey like a Chris Godwin signed jersey. They just sold for oh, yeah. $55.28, the newly minted number 14, Chris Godwin. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit, and that will do it for this Monday show. Thank you for tuning in. Two more games tonight. Very excited about those. And we'll be back with a big-time waiver show tomorrow. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.